Hello and welcome to Science Monitor, your favorite weekly news program on science, technology, invention and innovation. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor. In today's episode, we will talk about the 175th Foundation Day of Indian Institute of Technology, Rurki, India's first engineering college and also tell what is blue laser induced white light emission technology developed by CSIR National Physical Laboratory. There will be lots more news. But let's begin with the headlines. Indian Institute of Technology Roorkee completes 175 years of establishment. Started as India's first engineering college in 1847, the glorious journey the institute has achieved world-class recognition. Blue laser induced white light emission technology developed. This innovation of CSIR National Physical Laboratory will be helpful in making the headlights of vehicle more intense and efficient. India's first electric engine racing car ready for formula racing. Team Raftar of the Indian Institute of Technology Madras got successful after many years of hard work. And information about the latest activities related to science and technology in our special segment, Science Express. And now the news in detail. Educational and research institutions of the country have played an important role in making India a strong and prosperous nation. One such institute is the Indian Institute of Technology, Rurki, which completed 175 years of its establishment on 25th of November. Established in 1847 as the country's first engineering college, this institute today is striving to create a sustainable society through its innovative research along with imparting world-class education. Here is a Science Monitor report. Ganga Canal construction was planned in the country as a major civil engineering project during the British period. For this, training of civil engineers was started in 1845 in Roorkee City. In 1847, this training center was duly established as Roorkee Engineering College. It was the country's first engineering college of the British era and was named the Thompson College of Civil Engineering in 1854. In 1949, this institute got the status of the first engineering university of independent India. And on 21st September 2001, this engineering college was declared the seventh Indian Institute of Technology in the country. Along with 75 years of India's independence, the institute also completed 175 years of its establishment. On this occasion, various activities were organized throughout the year and on November 25, 2022, this institution of national importance celebrated its 175th Foundation Day. Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla Ji was the chief guest at the main function, who congratulated the institute and its staff for its achievements in its glorious journey and the contribution to nation building. Since its establishment, IIT Roorkee has played a vital role in providing the technical manpower and know-how to the country and in pursuit of the research. IIT Roorkee has ranked among the best technical institutions in the world and has contributed to all sectors of technological development. It has also been considered a trendsetter in the area of education and research in the field of science and technology and engineering. IIT Roorkee origins lie not in the desire to perpetuate privilege, but to build and contribute to the growth of the society. One of the highlights of the 175th Foundation Day celebrations was the display of Startup Expo 2022 which saw the participation of startups founded by the Institute. A commemorative postage stamp, coin and a coffee table book were also released on the occasion. The Institute also displayed a picture gallery of the alumni graduates of the Institute before the year 1900. 
Now the Indian Institute of Technology Rudki has 22 academic departments covering basic engineering, applied sciences, humanities and social sciences and management programs with an emphasis on scientific and technical education and research. During its illustrious journey, IIT Rudki has given various innovations to the country, especially in the field of civil engineering. These include earthquake resistance research and development for critical structures as well as general structures. The institute runs undergraduate, master and PhD programs in every field of technology and plays a vital role in nation building by contributing to the development of infrastructure. IIT Roorkee ne यहाँ पर नए नवाचार किए हैं प्रौद्योगिक में इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर के अंदर विज्ञान के अंदर नई टेक्नोलॉजी के अंदर जिसके कारण भारत के आधारभूत ढांचे और भारत के नवनिर्माण के साथ विज्ञान के सेक्टर के अंदर इस संस्था का बहुत बड़ा योगदान है और इस संस्था के जो पुराने विद्यार्थी हैं वह भी आज भी यहाँ पर इस संस्थान से जुड़े हुए हैं उनके अनुभव उन्होंने अपने अपने सेक्टर में जो काम किए हैं उनके अनुभव विचारों को साझा करके नए विद्यार्थियों में नई ऊर्जा का संचार हो पुराने विद्यार्थियों से प्रेरणा मिले आई थिंक इट कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड फॉर नॉट वन ईयर टू ईयर्स वन हंड्रेड इट हैज कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड इट हैज कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड द बेस्ट ऑफ इंजीनियर्स technologists civil servants social activists in several areas so certainly the contribution has been very intense and some areas which are very relevant to this region for example earthquake monitoring water monitoring uh, these are areas in which i think we have got the best of knowledge here uh, in uh, iit roorkee um uh, and in added to that if you look at it the populace that we have we are graduating uh, probably 2000 uh undergrad postgrad and phd's together that's a fairly large number the, and we're producing such extraordinary quality of people that's a part of national building for us over the last 175 years iit rudki has carved a niche for itself amongst its peer institutions globally and has continuously innovated to carry forward its legacy of excellence engineers who have obtained degrees from this institute have left their mark not only in the country but also abroad today this institute is moving forward in the direction of making the country self reliant keeping in view the current needs and upcoming challenges the institute is making a significant contribution towards establishing a society that can achieve sustainable development based on science and technology in a breakthrough indian researchers have developed a blue laser induced white light emission technology this technology will help in making the headlights of the vehicles more efficient Many select institutions all over the world are doing this type of research. In India, this success has been achieved by the CSIR National Physical Laboratory. To know more about what this technology is, watch this Science Monitor report. There is continuous research work on developing better headlights for fast moving vehicles. Efforts are being made to make headlights that emit light for a longer distance. and which can minimize the accidents especially at night one of the solutions is white light which is brighter and sharper than yellow light in this series fiem industries contacted the researchers of the csir national physical laboratory new delhi and entered into an agreement to work for developing white light from phosphor material researchers at npl have made breakthrough based on their research and experiments For the first time, researchers have created a prototype device which can emit bright white light by stimulating the phosphor with blue laser light. First stage to be cross over the make the phosphor material in large scale efficient manner that can be seen here and second stage we make the prototype device. We make the prototype device of reflection mode geometry 
we make the prototype reflection of the transmission geometry and also we a new concept of the integrating sphere in built with the this kind of the blue laser induced yellow phosphor and convert into white light so basically uh, the 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 aim of is this kind of indigenize the material we we don't want to uh, depend upon in next generation any kind of the lighting system on the other countries as well as the mission of the make in india made in india to fulfill from of the government of india phosphors are substances that emit light when stimulated by electricity temperature light electrons or any other source of excitation Generally this light is yellow and moreover the materials used in other lighting solutions are mostly imported which increases their cost Researchers at the CSIR National Physical Laboratory New Delhi who have been working in the field for a long time developed indigenous phosphor materials first made them cost effective and then experimented on exciting them with blue laser Finally with the help of sapphire Researchers are able to produce complete white light. By combining all these, researchers have been able to develop phosphor incorporated sapphire disk (PISD) device, which can emit very efficient white light. We replace the sapphire because if you put the incident light, laser light, it's going to reflect back a beam. So how is that beam going going to absorb? Either make the multiple reflection or other ways to absorb. by the other way to uh, like system in uh, phosphor integrated in glass so we started with the glass but still there was some tinge so what next we had done we make a ceramic which is the best one in sapphire and glass and ceramic if you compare and that fully they can absorb the uh, all kind of the blue laser and convert into white light so that cannot be produced if you just going to taken from the market uh, uh, the yellow phosphor they only showing the yellow tinge instead of the white the reason behind that this kind of the conversion the the ratio very important with respect to laser versus the emission if your the quantum yield is higher in the phosphor then you only you can able to convert into white light if it is lower then it can be convert from the leds but it cannot convert for the laser this was the major challenge which is addressed by the csir and pl the prototype device has been displayed at various automobile exhibitions and companies and has been appreciated all over Researchers are working to scale it up quickly. Once this technology comes to market, fast-moving vehicles like automobiles and bullet trains will get high-efficient and safe lighting solutions. Apart from this, stadium lights can also be made more efficient and economical by using this technology. Indian Institute of Technology Madras's Formula Racing Team Raftar has put its first electric racing car on the track. The institute has been working on this project for the past several years. This car prepared by Indian engineering students can be called a major achievement in the field of electric vehicles which supports the country's goal of reducing carbon emissions and a milestone in the Make in India campaign. A science monitor report. The speed is such that it is difficult to stop even the gaze. The thrill is such that the whole world is dominated by this game. We are talking about formula car racing for which the most powerful engines and technology are used. New experiments are being done continuously in this direction. Team Raftar, a group of students from the Indian Institute of Technology Madras, is also involved in this research and development. Established in 2012, this team of IIT engineers has built its reputation internationally. Team Raftar has remained at the first position for the last 3 years on the strength of its technical prowess. Team Raftar started working on using electric vehicles in formula racing and achieved this success. The first electric formula racing car RE23 developed by IIT students is all set to accelerate on the track. We are focused will be on developing cloud storage and processing which will enable the seamless conversion of modern day electric vehicles into the driverless vehicles of tomorrow. We plan to take up the challenge of developing energy efficient and safe autonomous technology for the future of Indian transport. Completely Indian design, 
Manufacturing and testing based indigenous electric formula racing car will not only reduce the fuel dependence on petroleum but also solve the pollution problem. This car is much better than the internal combustion engine model and also has the potential to improve the engine performance. We have our first electric car ready and it promises to be our fastest yet, clocking 0 to 100 km per hour in about 4 seconds. As a research oriented team, we are always working on cutting edge technology and are always looking to innovate and influence the electric vehicle industry. Batteries have often caused a fear of causing explosions. To mitigate against this, we have developed our very own custom battery management system. We have also developed a deep learning based battery SOC estimation model and an indigenously developed electronic control unit which is based on the Shakti processor. While this success will promote formula student culture, it will also increase the potential for growth and technological advancement in the still nascent global electric vehicle industry. This achievement brings Team Raftar closer to its goal of becoming the best Formula student team in the world. Team Raftar was initiated by the Centre for Innovation of IIT Madras to represent India internationally, promote industry standard engineering practices and nurture real-world technical expertise among engineering students. The journey of this team of 45 engineers towards their goal continues. And now let's have a quick look at some other developments that have made news in the field of science and technology in our segment Science Express. Professor Venu Gopal Achanta, Director CSIR National Fiscal Laboratory, New Delhi, has been elected as a member of the prestigious International Committee of Weights and Measures CIPM. It is the APEX International Committee that observes the development and implementation of weights and measures globally. Professor Venugopal is one of the 18 members from all over the world and the seventh Indian to join the committee. He was declared an elected member of CIPM at the Weights and Measures meeting held in Paris, France during November 15 to 18, 2022. This election of Professor Venugopal is not only important for the advancement of CSIR and PL but also a matter of pride for the nation as it promotes global acceptance and participation of India in global decision-making. Currently, the General Conference on Weights and Measures, that is CGPM, is represented by 64 member countries and meets every fourth year at the International Bureau of Weights and Measures, BIPM France. The world's first intranasal COVID vaccine developed in India has received approval from the Central Drug Standard Control Organization for restricted use in emergency situations. This information was shared by Union Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh during the annual general meeting of the Society of Autonomous Institutions of the Department of Biotechnology in New Delhi. The minister also lauded the role of the Department of Biotechnology in supporting the development of the vaccine by Bharat Biotech International Limited. On this occasion, the union minister also announced the historic decision of 14 autonomous institutes of DBT being merged to form an apex autonomous body, the Biotechnology Research and Innovation Council. This autonomous body will build on the foundation developed in centralized and integrated DBT institutes to promote synergy and conduct cutting-edge research addressing national priorities while maintaining their distinct research mandate. This will make it easier to face challenges like COVID-19 in the future. The world's first intranasal vaccine is the result of this synergy. The vaccine has been developed under the mission COVID Suraksha program. For now, the vaccine has been approved under restricted use in emergency situations for ages 18 and above. The Indian Journal of Biochemistry and Biophysics, a research journal of CSIR's National Institute of Science, Communication and Policy Research, has released a special issue for December 2022 titled Recent Advances in Nanomedical Sciences. 
the special issue is being published under the aegis of DBT Star College in association with the Institute of Nanomedical Sciences and Institute of Eminence, University of Delhi and Kirodimal College. CSIR NISCPR publishes 16 journals on various topics related to science and technology. The Indian Journal of Biochemistry and Biophysics, a monthly premier peer-reviewed research journal in the subject area of biochemistry, biophysics and biotechnology, ranks first among NISCPR journals and is attracting considerable attention from researchers and academicians globally. Such special issues not only help the magazine expand its reach and network, but also boost its influence among various stakeholders. The third generation Earth Observation Satellite OceanSat-3 was successfully launched by ISRO in partnership with the Ministry of Earth Sciences. The satellite's main objective is to monitor oceans. The launch was carried out along with other satellites from the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Harikota on November 26. The OceanSat series of satellites is a part of India's ambitious mission to monitor oceans. This is the third satellite of its kind with improved accuracy in wide range of operational and research applications including fishery resource management, ocean carbon uptake, harmful algal bloom alerts and climate studies. OceanSat 3 carries three surveillance sensors, namely ocean color monitor, sea surface temperature monitor and Ku band scatterometer. All these sensors have individual importance in fulfilling India's blue economy aspirations. OceanSat satellite will be able to get accurate information about sea surface temperature. Sea surface temperature is considered an important parameter in various predictions ranging from fish masses to cyclone genesis and movement. Temperature is also a key parameter in monitoring coral reefs and providing warnings of coral bleaching. Indian geologists have identified new potential areas of diamond-bearing kimberlites in the country. According to the information released by CSIR National Geophysical Research Institute Hyderabad, potential sites have been identified during the age determination process of dark-colored mafic rock mounds northwest of Chennai and south of Hyderabad. Mafic rocks have a low silica content of about 50% and are rich in magnesium and ferric compounds. The name Mafic comes by combining and abbreviating the words magnesium and ferric. Typically, these rocks are extremely hard and are mined for use in road and building construction. More than 150 such kimberlite sites have been identified in different parts of the eastern Dharwad Kraton region of which the kimberlite fields at Raichur in Karnataka and Vajrakaruru in Andhra Pradesh have been found to be diamond bearing. In such a situation, it is believed that there may be diamonds in the depth of the rocks of these newly identified areas. That is all in today's edition of Science Monitor. Keep sending your feedback and suggestions through email. Our email ID is indiascience at vigyanprasar.gov.in. You can also write in to us at vigyanprasar, A50, Sector 62, Noida 201309, Uttar Pradesh. So we'll take your leave now. See you again next week. Till then, stay safe and think scientifically. Bye for now.